And the whole happy thing, you know what? Happiness shouldn't be tied to money anyways. It's true. Mm. Money doesn't buy happiness. Money does not buy happiness. But it does buy chocolate. So I'm Steve. I'm Riley. Tax Force is our company. <laughs> What's the segment called? The segment's called Teaching Riley. What are we learning today, Riley? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about year-end planning since we're coming up on that time of year. Mm. And there are a lot of things that people should probably start thinking about around this time of year, right? Absolutely. Um, and one of those things that you had brought up last week was um, the Canada Pension Plan because it's an important thing to talk about and to take into consideration what you're tax planning, but also because there are some changes happening for 2021, right? Absolutely, yeah. The Basically, the rates are going up and fairly significantly mm -hmm. you know in, in my calculation and so there's three things that we look at when we say that the rates are going up okay right the first one being that the amount of income that you have to pay canada pension on that threshold mm -hmm. is going up okay right so it's going from uh 55,200 mm -hmm. to 58,100 okay so, that's so normally you're only paying cpp on up to that amount of income that's but right. now it's going up yeah, yeah. Okay. so you're paying income on are you paying cpp on a on more. more exactly okay that's a 5.3 percent increase yeah that's a pretty big increase right yeah and okay so canada pension you know that the employer pays half mm -hmm. and the employee pays half and when you're self-employed you pay both halves right yeah that percentage both halves in 2020 was 10.5 percent mm -hmm. in 2021 it's 10.9 percent so you're paying a higher percentage on more income yeah so not only are you paying <laughs> on more income, but on every dollar you're paying more. Okay. And that's a 3.4% increase. Okay. Okay. And there's one more. Well, <laughs> these two tied together yes. add up to the, the maximum that you can pay in. Mm -hmm. So if you make the maximum income this year, you paid in in 2020, you paid in $5,796. Okay. If you make the maximum income in 2021, mm -hmm. you're going to be paying in $6,332.90. Yeah, that's a big increase. 9.3% increase year over year. Wow. Okay. That's so what, what does that mean for people who are in that situation then? Is there anything they should be thinking about? Well... Unfortunately, for if you're an employee, there's really nothing that you can do about it. There's nothing that's going to be that's going to take the Canada pension away from you, mm -hmm. short of asking your boss to pay you less. Well, I don't think people are going to do that. Not very many people do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're self-employed, again, there's not a lot that you can do other than if you can find ways to lower your taxable income, because Canada pension's not a choice of how much you pay in or don't pay in. It's not optional to pay into it. It's we figure out what your net income is from business mm -hmm. and then apply the percentage. Okay, but, but there's some tax planning you can do. Yeah, if you're looking at uh, maybe making some purchases that you have mm -hmm. depreciation on that would lower your income because right. it lowers your taxable income, it's mm -hmm. gonna lower your Canada pension. Okay. So that's one thing you can do. Yeah. The other thing is your, your business structure. So if you're incorporated, mm -hmm. Uh, rather than taking a wage, you could potentially take a dividend. Right. So dividends don't attract Canada Pension. Okay. Wages do. Okay. So corporate structures give you some flexibility in the type of income you take, mm -hmm. and because of that, you have some flexibility in how much Canada Pension you take. Okay. An example. So you start working at 18, mm -hmm. and you pay in the maximum Canada Pension. You got a great job right out of the gate, right? Dang. You pay in the maximum Canada Pension from 18 to 55 mm -hmm. and then retire early yeah and don't but choose not to take your Canada pension until 65 mm -hmm. okay so you've paid in from 18 to 55 mm -hmm. but then paid nothing in for the 10 years prior to collecting mm -hmm. okay I on the other hand decide to you know do research papers and all kinds of stuff that I don't get paid for right maybe live at home on mom and dad's couch whatever it is I pay in nothing mm -hmm. from 18 to 55 Mm -hmm. but then decide, you know what, I better go get a job. And I get a good job, mm -hmm. and I pay in the maximum from 55 to 65. Mm -hmm. So you've paid in a lot more, mm -hmm. right? If you tell me you get the same right now, I'm going <laughs> to write I, a strongly worded letter. <laughs> I get more. Why? Because it's heavily weighted. 
to the last 10 years before you retire because the government understands the 10 years before you retire for most people are your highest income earning years. Canada Pension is calculated on earned income, which right. is defined as you know wages or business income. So there is some income that doesn't apply when you're figuring out how much pension you have to pay in. Absolutely, right? So okay. if you get um, interest income, doesn't mm -hmm. apply. Rental income doesn't apply. Okay. Dividend income doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. Income from your RSP doesn't apply. Okay. Right? Uh, income from uh, if you get spousal support or child support those incomes CPP is not calculated on any of those okay you cannot opt to pay more or less mm -hmm. it's is what it is based on what your income is from either again your T4 or your uh, business statement so what did we learn about CPP today well we learned that um, the income thresholds going up next year yep the percentage that you pay in is going up next year so lots of increases next year and we learned that you just have to pay it and suck it up unless you're a business owner <laughs> if you're self-employed or a business owner then maybe you can do some tax planning maybe you can do otherwise some tax you're sol yeah but yeah. you might be happy when you're 65.